painting hat. Use chalk pastel over your watercolors for soft edges. Okay, so I really wanted to paint my mailbox, but my husband wasn't down, so I decided to use a chalk marker because if he hated it, then I could just erase it. Anyways, I draw, drew some flowers, and you can do this too. It would look really awesome. Draw some flowers, draw some leaves, and you will create the most beautiful painting in the entire world on your mailbox. Goodbye. I will never paint a fully realistic image. It's just not my style. I'm obsessed with funky, fun, and flashy details. I visualize shapes when I think about shading and highlights. My artwork is defined by those shapes. What do I mean by that? Well, I draw unique lines around all the shading and highlighted areas. I then emphasize those lines with bright, flashy colors, or metallic leaves, or some rocks and crystals. The flashy ads are different for each painting. Okay, so this is how I personally draw a face without a grid. Of course, you'll need your reference. Okay, so as I look at the reference, the first thing I usually do when I draw is to check the angle of the face and the jaw. So you do that on your paper. Next thing I do is get the center of the face, alignment of the brows, nose, and the lips. Apply it to your paper and it should look something like this. Next thing I do is I do the nose. So just simple lines will do, don't worry about it too much. Important here is you just map the important areas of the face. Next is the eyes and as you can see the eye is really close to the bridge and this one's a bit farther off. And if you're worried about the spacing here, what you can do is measure this and then you'll know this is actually the same size as one eye. So you map it out, look at the directions and the shape, apply it to your drawing using simple lines and shapes. While you draw, you'll notice that you'll just be adjusting things as you go. I can follow for part two. If you are an artist, I can't recommend the Meds 100 Heads Challenge enough. This is a challenge started by Ahmed al Duri, where you draw these 100 heads in 10 days. There's no real rules, so you can use pencil, paint, or digital. You could even just draw 50 heads, or you could take 100 days to finish. What's important is that it gets you drawing. As artists, we have thousands and thousands of bad drawings in us, and they never go away. But the only way to get past those bad drawings and get to the good ones is to just put them on paper. This is a really great way to do it. I promise that if you stick with this challenge, you will really improve at drawing heads. And what's great about it is that the 100 heads that he provides on his Pinterest board have a great amount of variety in them. They're fantastic reference photos, so you really get to learn to draw a really wide variety of heads. And I cannot recommend this challenge enough. I'm halfway through. I hope you join me. Calling all artists. Use this sound to show your top 5 favorite pieces. Artist be like, yeah I'm good at drawing people. Yeah. Really? You sure? Then draw a man, come on, no more pretty girls, draw a dude for once.
confession to make. Art doesn't always bring me joy. In fact, it can cause me a lot of stress. The past few months, I've been really trying to dig into why that is. How can something I love to do so much cause me so much agony at the same time? Okay, agony might be a little dramatic, but you get the point. I've always known that I was a perfectionist, but I've never really understood how much it affected me to my core. If something doesn't satisfy me, I start being very negative with myself. That other side of me starts convincing me that I'm not good enough, that I will never be good enough, or that others are so much better than I am. So lately, I've been trying to stay off of social media and just dig deep and create with intention and purpose rather than just trying to make something look perfect. I think I'm starting to find my way back. And honestly, even if it's not perfect, I am happy. Quick, grab a marker or a pen. Don't think, just do it. Start with a squiggle. This is the back of the head. Bring it up and around. This will be the side profile. Make a notch where you want the nose to end. Shade a top lip. Leave a bottom lip open. And I create a very sharp chin and cheekbone area. Add an oval for the eye, a circle for the cheek, and then random details such as lines and dots around the eye area. I like to add details outside of the nose and stars across the cheeks. We're going to draw the same thing on the other side but facing the other direction. That way, these two line faces are looking at one another. The first time you try this, it's going to look lopsided. They aren't going to match. That's fine. Sisters, not twins, you know? I liked this doodle so much that I made a sticker. They're not for sale individually, but you can get a free one if you buy a print from my shop. For more, follow me on Insta at Savannalore. If you are in the first year of business as an artist and you're trying to make money from your art, either whether it be commissions or prints, let me tell you something that really worked for me. 90% of my sales from the first year of business has been because of this one marketing tip that a lot of people are scared to do. What I expected was to start to post my art online and then a bunch of strangers would be like, OMG, I want it, where can I buy it? It did not happen like that. I was hardcore marketing my art online for the last year. And instead of strangers being like, OMG, it was people that I know in real life saying, OMG, I want to support you. How can I do that? I see artists on here all the time being like, ah, I don't want people who know me to see me online. Ah, but I will tell you five reasons why you should market to people you know in real life based on my experiences. Like for part two. Paint a gouache portrait with me. Watercolor base, darkest colors first. Purple, green, and blue for shadows. Blocking in main colors. Gray for whites of eyes and teeth. Blocking in clothes. Red. Stray hair, background. P.E.L. tape. Yeah, we're done. Day one of posting my artwork until it goes viral. Do you believe in the power of art to heal? Because I do. I've been an artist ever since I can remember. But in college, I didn't create anything because I was so subscribed to productivity culture and I had tunnel vision when it came to succeeding in academics. I thought degrees would bring me happiness, but I was wrong. When I left grad school, I was more unhappy than I had ever been. And it was only when I picked up a pen and a paintbrush again that I remembered what joy felt like. Never fear creativity. It is healthy for us. Do you have a problem erasing your drawings too much? Then I've got a quick solution for you. Blend first! You can use a paper towel, a rag, a blending stump, and in a worst case scenario, your fingers, uh, you might ruin your drawing that way. It doesn't destroy the paper, and you can make darker marks on top of it, and it adds a really nice gradient to the background, and then you leave the erasing to the highlights. Tag someone who you think needs this. To all my fellow artists, I hope you have good problems today. I hope that you have so much interaction on your post that you have a hard time keeping up with comments. I hope you have so much creativity that you don't have enough time to put it all down on paper. And I hope you have so many orders that you have to manage your time today a little bit better than you normally do. All in all, I just wish you guys the best. Now just remember, your art is amazing. 
you are amazing and you got this.